we are seeing the laparoscopic right hemicolectomy case, complete mesocolic excision with central vascular ligation, which is D3 lymphadenectomy for oncological benefits. Uh, 68 years old female with a growth in cecum with bulky ileocolic nodes as shown in this picture. Patient was in a split leg position, umbilical and suprapubic pouch were 10 mm and rest were 5 mm. The epigastric and the suprapubic pouch were slightly towards the left. Surgeon stands in between the legs. Patient is kept slightly in Trendlenburg and right side up position so as to identify the right colon. The appendix is held and pulled cranially and towards the left so as to expose the ileocecal region. Uh, we are able to identify the right ureter here with its peristalsis and what we follow is a medial to lateral approach. There are different ways of medial to lateral approach. Uh, we depict here a, an approach called as initial retroperitoneal endoscopic tunneling approach in which the right colon is mobilized from uh, caudal to cranial except for its lateral attachments so as to free it from its posterior attachments with the retroperitoneum. Once we enter the correct plane, it is almost bloodless. So a combination of sharp and blind dissection is done. The duodenum is seen and it's brought down. The complete sea loop of duodenum is being dissected with a combination of blunt and sharp dissection. It's, uh, it has gone as cranially as possible till the level of uh, the liver. So the torch structure was the right gonadal vein which is brought down again and the upper limit as I said is seeing the liver and once it's seen the gospies is kept below. Medially it is mobilized till we are able to see the pancreas and the SMV. These few attachments are taken down from the mesocolon uh, attachment to the duodenum so as to expose the duodenum, pancreas and the SMV as seen in this picture. So that's the end of IRITA or initial retroperitoneal endoscopic tunneling approach. The right colon is then uh, put down. We come uh, again from the lower border of duodenum. The peritoneum is cold open so as to reach the SMV. There are two approaches. One we can go from the ileocolix to the middle colix or coming from the other way around. Since we had bulky nodes in ileocolic region, we decided to come from the middle colic in this patient. So when we lift the transverse colon, we will be able to see the middle colic arteries and right branch as it was depicted. So the middle colic vessel is then skeletonized from below upwards. The right branch is also clearly seen, which is also skeletonized by taking down the mesocolon with the help of uh, vessel sealer device. So use of vessel sealer devices like Ligasure makes uh, dissection faster and precise. So the right branch of the middle colic vessel is clipped and then cut and once this is done we move more proximally the middle colic vessel is then dissected towards its origin or insertion into the superior mesenteric vessels. So in this patient an additional accessory right colic artery was seen which was dissected, clipped and then divided. So once we divide this we will be able to see a venous structure which is slightly away from the adjoining artery and that structure is the gastrocolic loop of Henle. So that is why it is slightly away from the adjoining accessory right colic artery. So that is the vein and here we will be able to see its insertion into the superior mesenteric vein clearly. So that is the gastrocolic loop of Henle and this is the SMV. The gastrocolic loop of Henle is dissected, clipped and then divided. This step can be done from above also after taking down the uh, gastrocolic ligament. Uh, but since it was easy, we did it from below itself. This we'll be seeing again once we take down the gastrocolic ligament attachments. And once this is done, the next thing to be done is to go along the SMV 
in its right border to identify the right colic vessels and the iliocolic vessels and then divide them. So that is the superior mesenteric vein and adjoining is the superior mesenteric artery. So as we move caudally, we will be identifying the right colic vessels. This is a slightly fatty patient. So the use of energy devices, vessel sealers, uh, enable us to dissect the vessels properly, identify them precisely near its insertion and then divide them so as to increase the yield of lymph nodes and to remove the lymphovascular uh, tissues away. So that is the SMV, the right colic vessels, both artery and the vein posteriorly is being dissected. So yes, we can see here the right colic vessels and the superior mesenteric vein as is being depicted in this picture. So once this is done, we can either take artery and vein separately or together as shown in this video. So the right colic vessels are taken together, clipped and then divided. So what is remaining is the iliocolic vessel in this patient. As we move caudally, we can identify them. But remember in this patient, she had bulky iliocolic nodes. So the section was done proximal to that so as to avoid uh, leaving behind any uh, lymphatic tissue. So the iliocolic vessel was skeletonized. All the lymphatic tissues to the right of superior mesenteric vein was taken along with the specimen. The iliocolic vessels were clipped near its insertion into the SMV and then divided. So this completes the uh, central vascular ligation part of this procedure. Few attachments of the mesocolon to the duodenum are being taken down. So that completes the medial to lateral mobilization of the right hemicolectomy. So completed dissection shows the SMV, the clipped uh, middle colic, accessory right colic, right colic and iliocolic vessels, SMA and the C-loop of duodenum. So the completion of uh, medial to lateral mobilization is done. Mesentery is also taken down towards the ileum so as to enable the extraction of the specimen through a small periumbilical incision after applying a wound protector. And once this is done, we then shift our camera from the suprapubic port to the umbilical port to take down the gastrocolic ligament. So the gastrocolic ligament is taken down. This vessel is the right gastroepiploic vein. So the lymph nodes along the right gastroepiploic vein as it enters the gastrocolic trunk is also taken down. So the clip here has been applied below on the gastrocolic trunk. So lymphadenectomy is also done. So as we discussed earlier, it becomes easy once we have done almost all of the things from below. So once that is done, there are there will be no more vessels to be ligated. Small gastrocolic vessels will be there which can be taken down with the vessel sealer. So the lateral attachments of the right colon are being taken down as the final part of the procedure. So with the combination of sharp and blunt dissection, last few attachments of the right colon to the lateral abdominal wall is being taken down. So again, uh, the camera is shifted to the suprapubic port so as to confirm the position of the peristaltic ureter which has been left below. The final attachment is also taken down. And once this is done, we extend the suprapubic uh, or the umbilical incision in this patient umbilical incision and anastomosis is done extracorporeally thank you